The topic of my lecture, good things or bad things, good people. There's a philosophical part to this, a theological part to this, which is what often comes up when people say, how come good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? That is not the thrust of my discussion tonight. Okay? It's the question of evil, the question of why, you know, this person who is a tyrant, this person who is evil, yet somehow they have access, somehow good things happen to them. And then you have another person who lives their lives righteously and bad things happen to them. How is that possible? Because ultimately, the question that we're not asking is what is good and what is bad. We are not capable of encompassing with our limited faculties what is good and what is bad. So I'm going to start with this for a moment. If you spoke to an insect and you asked the insect to explain to you the most complex political issue that's happening in the world right now. Can you unravel all of this for me and explain all of this for me? The insect would be incapable and we would not burden ourselves with waiting for an explanation from an insect. Why? Because we understand that the insect is limited in their understanding. Okay, let's graduate to a human being. You don't walk up to a baby and ask the baby to explain to you complex phenomenon. Because you can see, even though you were once that baby, you can see that the understanding of that baby is limited by their infancy. When we compare the knowledge that we have and what we can encompass with our understanding and our faculties of the world around us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the discrepancy is far greater than us to that child or a human being to even the smallest insect. And that's something, by the way, that Allah has given us signs, signs around us so that we could understand our limitations. You know, Allah has given us, جَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعُ وَالْأَبْصَارُ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ Allah mentions faculties. He gave you your hearing, He gave you your seeing, He gave you your sense of comprehension, perception, so that you could get to know Him. We will show them signs in our furthest arrangements. الآفاق وفي أنفسهم In the furthest arrangements in the sky as well as in themselves until they come to the understanding that this is the truth. So Allah has given us enough to understand that we really don't know much. How? If you were to compare the size of the earth to the observable elements around the earth, you realize we're really not that big. How much have we seen that lets us know, subhanAllah, even the effect, the light, billions of years after from a star, that lets us know our limitations constantly. But it also lets us know that as much as you can see, there is so much more that you can't see. And so that is to dawn upon you your limitations, your limitations. Someone asked me the question. I said this wasn't going to be the bulk of my talk. But like you said, we, we talk a lot, you know, professors and, and, and doctors and especially mashayikh. Not your mashayikh in Bosnia, just the ones in America. We talk too much. Um, you know, I, I was asked this question recently about the hadith of a mother and her child. Where the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah is more merciful to you. Arhamu bikum. Allah is more merciful to you than a mother is with her child. And someone said, but a mother would never do this to her child. I said, do what? Right? And what are you speaking about? Because you're reading what a mother does to her child from the capacity of now understanding at the level of the mother the nature of the child. Let me put it to you this way, okay? How many of you have been babies before? You're all children before, right? We don't remember when we were one year old, 
we don't remember when we were, you know, you might have some bits and pieces that flash through your mind from when you were two year old. But when your mother took something away from you, when you were a one year old, you were trying to choke yourself. All right. I have a two year old, so I get this. The look that she gives me, you know, my, my, my baby Khadija, she has a, uh, we play Barbies together. I play Barbies with her. So she takes the, she takes this little piece. She broke it off. And I don't know. She loves the Barbie, but then she rips the head off of the Barbie and rips the arms off sometimes. And then you have to get her a new Barbie. And she's trying to choke on this little piece. And I take it out of her mouth and she gives me this look like I am the greatest tyrant in the world. I'm the biggest volume in the world. Like, how dare you? I thought you loved me. How dare you take this toy away from me? Because that's the nature of her understanding. Now, when Khadija grows up, inshallah, and she sees another baby, maybe her own, which I can't think about right now, but another baby, she'll perfectly be able to understand that because she will be at the level of the giver and the taker at that point, not the one who's being taken from. The one who's being taken from, it's not that you have to come to terms with what's being taken and what's being given. It's the level of understanding of the one from whom being taken is actually giving them life because you're not allowing that child to choke themselves to death. It's about their faculties, about their understanding. And so all of this is to say what? The discrepancy between the knowledge of Allah and each and every single one of us and the knowledge of a mother and her child is as great as any discrepancy that you can calculate. إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ SubhanAllah, even the angels said, when Allah said, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed Adam alayhi salam, they said, أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ Wait, you're going to give this to someone that spills blood and spreads corruption? What did Allah say? Allah did not give them a long philosophical answer. Allah did not say to the malaika, to the angels, well, in this generation, this person will come. And this prophet, and this person. Allah said, I know what you don't know. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. And the angels submit to that. I know what you don't know. And the mufassireen, they, they explain that. They say what Allah was talking about is the goodness that will come out of this human enterprise. It's not just corruption. Out of the loins of this Adam, alayhi salam, will come the likes of Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus, peace be upon him, Musa, alayhi salam, Dawood, alayhi salam, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Out of the likes of the loins of this, this creation, 